we're going to look at the floor of the cranial cavity. And what the floor of the cranial cavity refers to is if I open up the skull, this is, well, actually, I'll show you what it, what it looks like. So if I were to open up the skull, which means that I would cut over here and take off the roof. Okay, so I would take off the roof of the skeleton and look inside. So I would cut over here and look inside. This is what it would look like. So I've cut off the roof of the head, and now I'm looking at the floor of the cranial cavity, which means I'm looking at the floor of where the brain would sit. And where the brain would sit is right over here. And so one thing we know is that this is the front. The frontal bone is at the front. And then this green thing over here is the ethmoid bone. And when you look at the ethmoid bone really closely, I'll have a picture over here, there's a projection that comes out where something's sticking out. And that thing that's sticking out is known as the crystagalli, CGs, okay, for crystagalli. And then this part over here, which is also part of the ethmoid bone, is known as the cribriform plate. And it's cribriform, which means it's perforated. You see those holes? And the reason why it's perforated is so that we can smell. So the sense of smell is coming through these cribriform plate. Okay, so let's go back here. This over here is the top part over here is the crystagalli. The green perforated holes that we see in the bone is known as the cribriform plate. And this is where the nerves go in. Um, the olfactory nerve goes in from the nasal cavity to the brain and it helps us with our sense of smell. Then we're going to look at the sphenoid bone, which is right here in purple. And there is a greater wing and there's a lesser wing of sphenoid bone. So let's actually look at that. Let's see here. So is it a sphenoid bone? If I take this bone out, it will look like this. Do you see how it kind of looks like a phoenix bird? And when you look at the phoenix bird, the bigger wing, okay, that wing is known as the greater wing. So this over here and this over here is the greater wing. And the lesser wing is the one on top. So sometimes you can think of this, this bird over here. This is a mommy bird and there's a baby bird just flying on top. Of that bird and that baby bird has the lesser wings so imagine another bird on top of that big bird okay so the lesser wing um, over here then the greater wing over here now this part in the middle is known as the so this part over here in the middle is known as the cella trachea actually i said it wrong the correct way of saying it is cella tercica so the cella tercica, that's how you pronounce it, is the middle part over here. Okay, so the middle part of the sphenoid bone is known as the cella tercica. Now, as you know, when you look from the, from the floor of the cranial cavity, so if I were to cut the skull, open it up, and look from the, down, so look from down here, this is what it would look like, and I could also see all the foramens that are up there. This is the greater wing, remember the big wing, and then this over here is the lesser wing, the small wing. This over here, think of something magnificent, so foramen magnum, magnum magnificent. We looked at the sutures, and I wanted to show you guys, this is the coronal suture, which is towards the front. This is the lambdoid suture, which is towards the back. Sagittal suture is right over here. So think of C, C comes first, so that's why it would be in the front, coronal, and then think of out lambdoid, lambdoid is, you know, it comes after C, so it would be more at the back. And sagittal, I think of sagittal as like, you know, I think of squiggly, right, sagittal is squiggly, and so the more squiggly lines right over here, and that is the sagittal suture. So we already looked at all the bones of the neurocranium. And we already looked at all the bones of the visceral cranium, which is the face. This is the brain. This makes up the, or protects the brain. This protects the face, or is it's um, the bones that are surrounding the face, rather. And so here is a quick review. Um, so I encourage you guys to pause the video and just quickly review the locations of the uh, bones. Now, this is something important. When we say what are the bones that are sub supporting the respiratory opening and the eye socket, this word refers to like the breathing, right? So nose, think of nose, 
and think of the eye socket. So the bones that are around that area refer to the nasal bone, the bone bone, the lacrimal bone, because that's near the eye. Right, so nasal bone is like helps with breathing. It's around the air bones that help with breathing. So this is the nasal bone. This is the vomer bone or vomer bone. Lacrimal bones help the eye socket. So it's around the eye. And zygomatic and inferior nasal concha. So zygomatic is also kind of surrounding the eye, right? And the inferior nasal concha, which is over here, that also helps with the respiratory opening or the breathing, right, with the nose. When you're looking at bones that help with the masticatory system, so when you think of masticatory, think of chewing. Okay, when, what are the bones that help with chewing? And the bones that help with chewing are these bones over here, the maxilla, because this is associated with chewing. Like when you're biting something, if the maxilla is in, comes into play, the mandible definitely comes into play, because this is the only movable bone where it moves up and down to help you chew some mandible. And then the palatine bone. So the palatine bone is the palate. So on the inside, you can see there's the, I know you can't see here, but there is a palate. And the palate makes up part of the masticatory system. It's the bones that support the masticatory system. So if we look at this over here, oops, sorry. the palate, which is in green, the maxilla and the mandible all help with the masticatory system. So let's just look at the maxilla. So the maxilla is the top part of your jawbone, and it has um, four processes, or four things sticking out from it. Processes means projections. There is the frontal process, and so if you imagine the skull, the skull of the front has a frontal bone, so this is projecting towards the frontal bone. So that's the frontal process. There is the zygomatic process, so it's projecting towards the zygoma or the zygomatic bone, which is your cheekbone. There is the alveolar process. So the alveolar process is basically where the teeth are. So where the teeth are, the bones, so basically the teeth is inside a socket, or the tooth over here is inside the socket, and that socket is lined up or lined with the alveolar Process. So any bone that's surrounding the tooth is known as your alveolar process. Okay, And then we have the palatine process, which is this over here. So imagine a palate over here, and that top palate is known as your palatine process. Most of the hard palate is made up of the palatine process. One thing I want to note is the maxillary tuberosity. So a maxilla means the top right, the top um, jawbone, and when you look at the maxilla, do you see that at the very end there is a tuberosity or, you know, an area, and that area is right behind the last tooth. So the area behind the last tooth is known as a maxillary tuberosity, usually behind the wisdom teeth. So the area behind the wisdom teeth is known as your maxillary tuberosity. We kind of looked at this before, so median palatine suture. When you think of median, think of middle, middle palatine suture. Transverse is the one that's going like this, across, and it's forming a T. Think of it like that, so transverse has a T. This line makes a T over here, so transverse palatine suture. This is a hole over here, which is a foramen, incisive foramen. The way, the way to remember this is <clears throat> one of the things you'll learn is these are your incisor teeth. And they got the name incisive, right? Incisive sounds like incisor teeth. That's why it's near the um, incisors. Here's another um, point to make is that when you look at the mandible, which is the bottom jaw, there are three parts. There's the body, there's the ramus, and there is an alveolar process. So let's review all of those. When you think of the body, think of... Um, someone lying down so a body someone lying down over here and so that's the body horizontal body this is the ramus over here and what i want you to think of as like a ramp a ramp going up so ramus or r-a-m for you could think of ramp to remember so it's like a ramp going up 
And the alveolar process, remember the alveolar process is any is the bone surrounding the tooth or the teeth. So any bone surrounding the teeth is known as your alveolar process. So the top part over here is your alveolar process.